With me today is Advocate Njenga Mwangi from Kenya. Wakili, welcome to the interview. Thank you, Mr. Korea. We start with ICC cases against President Uhuru Kenyatta, Deputy President William Ruto, and journalist Arab Sun. What is your position on these ongoing cases, sir? The truth and the real honest truth is that from the beginning we said that the Campo did a very poor investigation of any because he ultimately used the reports that were compiled by non-governmental organization, specifically the civil society. Mm. The only report that he could use that we would say had some legal authority would be the Working Commission report. But then you remember that the Working Commission was mandated to investigate the post-election violence that took place in Kenya immediately after the 2007 presidential elections results were announced. But Waki and his commissioners had only three months to compile a report, to investigate and write a report on what happened in Kenya. He didn't have enough sufficient time to do so. So you will find that he will go to a location two days before, his investigators will go to a location two days before the commission went there. The little evidence they gathered would be adduced either in the open or in camera. And then after the end of three months, he compiled a report. That report itself cannot have been called conclusive. And that's why in his recommendations, he had recommended for the, he had recommended for the formation of a local tribunal mm -hmm. to try those who are found to have had the highest responsibility in the commission of the crimes that were committed in 2008. But remember the one thing is that Waki had been commissioned under the Commission of Inquiries Act, mm -hmm. which provides that his reports and recommendations must be handed over to the president. That is not what he did. He gave the president and the prime minister the report. Then an envelope and the evidence were given to Kofi Annan, which in my own uh, opinion, I think was a contravention of the Kenyan constitution and the Kenyan law. If there was any suspect, they should have been given to the president because that is what the law says. So that they were given to Ocampo, who, to, not to Ocampo, to Kofi Anna, who eventually took the role of a Kenyan prefect, telling Kenyans what must do and what they must not do, was technically speaking against the constitution and the laws of our country. And now that you talk about the gathering of evidence, which was, uh, you know, it went through Waki Commission and so on. Yes. And uh, in the present trial against William Ruta and Son, you have been mentioned as one among other leaders, let us say the one, Miss, Mrs. Uh, Miss uh, Karua, uh, we have PS Family Secretary Iringo, as people who were tasked with, um, uh, you know, getting witnesses who could uh, fix uh, Honorable Ruta. Can you clarify your involvement, if any? First of all, let me say is that there is no iota of any truth that I was out to victimize the deputy pre uh, president. First of all, because we are not, we, we are not very intimate. I had nothing against him. Mm -hmm. He was in a political divide that I was not. But my involvement with the Waki Commission was purely to represent the victims. If you notice in the Waki Commission, the police had their lawyer, the National Security Intelligence Services had their lawyer, the military had their lawyer, PNU had its lawyers, uh, ODM had its lawyers. The only person who did not have a lawyer was the victims. And so the victims whom I had worked with from the day when they were thrown out from certain areas and, for example, in a crucial ground, they gave me instructions to represent them in the working commission. And that is exactly what I did. They gave me the evidence that we had used before the working commission. So it was not a question of victimization. First of all, I had absolutely no interest in any position 
uh, Deputy President Ruto would be vying for. So I would have absolutely no reason to want to, to victimize him. Mm -hmm. My duty was as a lawyer to defend the interest of the people who had appointed me who are the internally displaced, specifically the ones in Nakuru. Uh, uh, but now I'm thinking of the defense, since you have been mentioned. Ruto's yes. defense may decide to summon you as a witness. Will you cooperate or you will ignore the summons to appear? Let me say this. I'm an officer of the court, not only an officer of the court in Kenya, I'm also a lawyer licensed to practice at the International Criminal Court. So if they issued me with summonses to appear, I would honor the summonses. Because all I will be explaining is what is it that I have done. The same way I represent the same victims in the Working Commission, the same victims appointed me to represent them in the ICC as their lawyer in the International Criminal Court. Because the victims are also allowed to participate. Mm -hmm. They filled the forms and the forms were filed with the court. But eventually, the court, especially the legislature, Mm -hmm. I don't know in what term, whichever criteria they used, they picked Sunata Chana to represent the victims. A person who had not been in Kenya for many years, mm -hmm. a person who did not know where to find the victims, a person who had not developed a relationship of trust with the victims. No wonder last year, no only this year when I was in Germany for mm -hmm. my daughter's graduation, I read from the news that there are some victims who had withdrawn part participation Mm -hmm. in William Ruto's case. The reason why the victims are uh, withdrew, one of them is that they are not being represented by the lawyer of the choice. And secondly and most fundamental is that they think the people who are in the ICC, the accused in the ICC, are not the people who should be in the ICC. There are I, certain I... other people who, according to them, bear more responsibility on the crimes that were committed other than the two accused persons in Kenya in Kenya courts in Kenya one. It's, it sounds like you are accusing the ICC registry uh, of favoritism when it comes to select, selecting lawyers. It is not a question of I, it is let's agree on one thing uh, mm -hmm. it is it's it's in all international organizations, they have what they call old boys mentality. Mm -hmm. They usually will pick people they relate in one way or the other. And the truth of the matter is that the Kenyan case, the choosing of the common legal representative in Kenya was influenced by the local intermediaries in Kenya who are the local NGOs. Uh, President Kenyatta has been granted excusal that enables him not to be present in court at all times but when absolutely necessary only. Do you think he will decide to pursue deferral instead of appearing? First of all, there are two things that we must look at in this case, especially when you are talking about the president. The president of Kenya is also the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Kenya, mm -hmm. as well as being the head of state. The role of a head of state or the commander-in-chief is a 24-hour on call appointment mm. as we know today is that kenya is in, in at war in somalia against the al-shabaab the al-shabaab might not be it's not a country but it is a non-state actor that mm. acts like a state it uh, can create violence and terror visit violence and terror against the world you saw the situation that happened americans invading Afghanistan mm. after the 9-11 to go and deal with the Al-Qaeda. Yes. Kenya has done the same, not primarily to safeguard the security of Kenya, but the security of the region because Somali left unattended is a breeding ground for military uh, uh, insurgents and people and terrorists. So as far as Kenya situation is concerned, and this is where Chapter 7 of United Nations Charter comes into play, because that is the one that the primary obligation of United Nations was to ensure there is international peace and security. While Kenya is in, Uga in, in, uh, in uh, Somalia, pacify Somalia, we are literally speaking in a state of war. And therefore, our withdrawal from Somalia can make 
East African region very unstable. So for the, <coughs> because of the threat to international peace and security, Kenya now can seek deferral because today, when the confirmation of charges were done, Uhuru Mge Kenyatta was the deputy prime minister. Yes. Today he is the president of the Republic of Kenya and commander in chief of the Kenyan Armed Forces. He is the one who guarantees national unity and also who guarantees the peace and security, not only in Kenya, but also along our borders. So for that point alone, he is pursuing two issues. One of them is deferral by the United Nations Security Council. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the second one is that he has already filed and he has been granted recusal from attending all sessions. Mm -hmm. He has also filed an application asking the court to dismiss the charges against him because his witnesses are being interfered with by the prosecution. Before those two, before those two applications have been dealt with, I think there is still room for maneuver. So he, he is approaching this the way I see it, two pronged, through the court asking for recusal and the dismissal of the charges, and through the United Nations Security Council. Uh, the African Union has advised President Kenyatta and Deputy President Ruta not to continue to cooperate with the ICC. What is your take on this one? Let me say this, and this is the most the saddest thing about the ICC, is that today the truth of the matter is the ICC Mm. Would dare not charge an American, a Briton, a German, a person from France or the European Union in the International Criminal Court. They dare not charge anybody from the state of Israel. But as you know very well, since the creation of this court, the state of Israel has mm -hmm. committed atrocious crimes against the citizens of Gaza Strip and the West Bank. But it has not dared go and investigate or threaten to investigate. Why are we having selective justice? The Americans have committed crimes against humanity in Iraq and Afghanistan. Why haven't we seen the prosecutor say he's going to investigate them? Come nearer home, what the situation in Syria where tens of thousands of people have been killed, women have been raped. How come that the prosecutor has not gone to investigate? Mm -hmm. And this is where the African, when the Africans cry out and say, this court seems to be focused on Africa. Then, why wouldn't you see some little bit of truth in that? Because, I dare say, they will never bring an American here. In fact, America the United States of America have signed bilateral treaties with countless countries where those countries have committed through bilateral treaties mm -hmm. that even if they were ordered to arrest an American and bring him before the court, they will not do so. Now, come to look at two things. Under the Vienna Treaty, all treaties are the same. Kenya is signatory to the African Union Treaty as well as a signatory to the ICC Treaty. Which treaty has precedence over the other? Can you say the ICC treaty supersedes the African Union treaty? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So, is the president bound to obey, to follow the summons at the ICC, all the directives or resolution of the United uh, of the African Union? Mm -hmm. It's debatable. The president so far has said he will cooperate with the court. But I think also in the cooperation with the court, it must be made certain that he has constitutional obligations that he must discharge yes. as president of the Republic of Kenya. And that is why all constitutions in the world, provided that the president cannot be taken to court whilst in office, mm -hmm. even the United States of America, they cannot take the president to court. If anything, he would be impeached by the Senate. We have pre provisions for impeachment also in our country. So this would be a first, a sitting president. 
the whole question that must be asked. He is the only one who can authorize, who can give directives to the military. Yes. Suppose Kenya is under attack from the say, Sudan or Ethiopia while he is sitting in court. How does he discharge his constitutional obligation as the guarantor of security to the Kenyan public? So these are the questions that must be asked, and that is the questions that I think will be considered by the Security Council of the NATO International United Nations when it is considering the African nations through the African Union request that the Kenyan cases be before them. But the, but the, the ICC has already come out clear saying President Uhuru, Deputy President Ruto, they knew that they were going to be charged, they were going to stand trial. Why did they decide to go for the presidency? First of all, <coughs> is their constitutional run right to run for any of the office? And Kenya is a sovereign state. Kenyans elected them president and deputy president while they knew there were charges against them. Kenyans, literally speaking, were saying, we have faith in these two gentlemen. If Kenyans didn't have faith, you will not have had six point something million people mm -hmm. voting for both President Uhuru and Deputy President. So the Kenyan, the sovereignty of the Kenyan people is exercised by the Kenyans themselves. They've made him president and deputy president. And the dynamics change immediately that a president is not a private citizen anymore. He cannot talk about my personal obligations. He has, he has become now the property of the Kenyan people, the property of the state. So there are a lot of questions that can be, there can be a lot of debate, but so far he has said he will cooperate with the court, but the court must also make conditions. But when you, let me interrupt yes. there, when you think about the justice for the victims, now, if we get deferral, it is said it, it, it can be reduced yearly. One year, one year, one year. Um, and I read somewhere where the judge, the presiding judge, um, now in this case, saying that if this is granted by the United Nations, uh, what about if uh, President Kenyatta is re-elected to another five-year term, maybe another five-year term? Well... The maximum period he can be elected is 10 years. Yes. Five years, then another five years. And the victims have waited for five years. Now, so it would be 15. What I'm saying is, we must also ask ourselves, are we looking for retributive justice or are we looking for restorative justice? I think what the victims are more interested in is restorative justice. And this has already started taking place. You saw the president the other day going to camps trying to give financial support for the victims so that they can restart their lives. Those ones who did, had their farms, they were resettled back in their farms. Those ones that were landless, the government has bought land and helped them build the, for them houses. So you cannot talk about... The restorative justice has already started taking place. The victims who I represented at the ICC and who were in the camps and had instructed me. They have already instructed me and have filed suit against the Kenyan government in the Kenyan High Court where they have asked for compensation. And the Attorney General has already shown willingness to negotiate out of the court so that these people are compensated by the government. 